This is Gemara Numa Daf Lamid Zayi in the second day of Shavuos. All the learning for this month, the month of Sivan, especially the learning of Shavuos of the entire Chabura, should be a tremendous Chos Shidduch for Yisrael Chaim and Devira Mir Tashem. He should find his Zivog Hagain Bekarav with clarity and everything should go easy. Of course, we cannot forget or Lachay the Men of Avegel Chaim and Sarshal Sivan and Yisrael Sarvas Kenandi the Basim Shchai Say Yisrael Men Indel as the President of Shavuos Shomim as the Amiba Shavigur Shulchan of Aldav and Itariva. Shmuel, I'm sorry, not that Shmuel then Tila Dinim and Khan Razil Nukai Bas Mini Brachos of Misa Dinim Bashin Mindal, Sim uh Sivan Figur Sivan Figur and Michael Sun the Huva and Khamanda and Taiba, Rivko Bas Vashavan at Sazium Michlaster, Besai Shaar Khali Israel. We pick it up on the bottom of Lamid Vav Amid Bays. We're in the middle of the first Stage of the Avaid of the Kain Gadol and Yom Kippur. I shouldn't say the first stage, I should say the first animal that he's dealing with. He's dealing with the par. What is he doing? He's busy doing Vidui. We learned yesterday the precise location that the Vidui, where the animal is standing between the Ulam and the Mizbeach. How he did Vidui, he rested his two hands between the horns. Why the animal was standing that way so that if, if it defecated, it did not do storage to the base of Migdash. And what was the precise wording of the Vidui of the confession of the Kain Gadol? The Machlek is Chacham Min Rameir and the Chachamim that were teaching us that it goes in order of severi- severity, first we go with inadvert and pshayim, uh, uh, then we go to that which was done on purpose, then we go that which unfortunately might have been a rebellion. And we pick it up from there, it says the Gemara Tanur Abanan, about 13 lines from the bottom of Lamed Vav and Bebez, V'chiber B'chabaras, Tavarim HaKasa Metaber. What is V'chiber? What does the Pesach need? That it should get a Kapar and a Tomin, it means with that <clears throat> Uh, an atonement that comes to words, meaning vidui. He says vidui. Asks the Gemara, At I remember kaparis tavarim. Oh, you know I like kaparis damim. How do you know that the way to get this kapara is through vidui in his mouth? Maybe you do it through dam. Maybe it's through zrika of the dam of the carbon. Says the Gemara, Harini dan, hare ani dan. I'll explain it to you. Nemer akan, it says by our pasa kapara. Nemer lahalon, by the seir amishtaleach, the go that's being thrown off the mountain kapara. Ma kapara ha mura bisir tvarim. Just like over there, when we're throwing the goat off the mountain, we say vidu with our mouth. Av kapara mura bepar tvarim. Says the Gemara, one second. Vim nafshecha loimar. Maybe you'll say also by the seir lazazel. It's also a kapara through dam and not through words. You know, I'll answer you. That the Pasik says, says the Pasik that it should be a kapara for you and your for you and your, excuse me, it should be a kapara for you and your um for you and your household, and then the Basik says, then you do the Shechita. So clearly, which is the Makar? Is it from the Dam? Of course not, because you didn't do a Shechita yet. So must be, it's through Vidoy. So basically, we had two sources that the Kapara that's being affected through this animal is through Vidoy of the mouth. Number one, we learned it out from the Seer HaMishtaleach, the Seer LaAzazel. And number two, we said, if that's not good enough for you, we'll learn it from the Pasuk itself, in which we see that he got the Kapara before doing the Shechita. Says the Gemara, my vim What was bothering you? What do you mean to say that if you don't like the Xer Shav I just said, I'll give you another source. What was the problem? Explains the Gemara. Three lines from the bottom. Maybe you'll say, learn it out from the other Seir. The Seir that's brought inside. Then we actually do sprinkle the blood for the Kapara. So how do you know which seer, which go to equate it to? Maybe it should be to the seer that's a car button over there. You don't say vidoy. Therefore, we have a second source. So we have a second source. You get a kapar even before the par was shechted. Says the Gemara as we turn over to today's daf. And how do we know that the way to say vidoy, you always start with ana, please. This will give us a bigger uh, appreciation for the videos that we always say. How every word is so precise. How do we know we're supposed to say please? Says the Gemara, never kan kapara, never la alon kapara. It says over here. 
Kapara, and by Moshe Rabbeinu, which was when, after the Egel Azov, when Moshe Rabbeinu is davening on behalf of Klal Yisrael, it also says the word Kapara, so we can equate the two, Malahalon Ba'ana, Afghan Ba'ana, so just like over there, Moshe Rabbeinu said please, so to by us, we say please, says the Gemara, okay, what's the next word, Ana, Hashem, says the Gemara, Umenayin Sheb Hashem, and how do we know we're supposed to say please, Hashem, never can Kapara, but never Be'egla Arufa Kapara, now we have a second source, Be'egla Arufa, when they have to decapitate the head and they have to say also Vido he uses the word Kapara and Malalon over there by the Egla Rufa Bishem Afkan Bishem so those are the that we know first of all Anna we learn from Maishra Abinu by the Egla Zav and Hashem we learn from Egla Rufa Amr Abai, one second. I understand why didn't Moshe Rabbeinu learn out from Egla Rufa? Because my dahave have It's over. The story's finished. Moshe Rabbeinu davened for Egla Yisrael and he got the Kabar. You can't have learned out from Egla Rufa. There wasn't Egla Rufa. Ela Egla Rufa till me Why did there learn Egla Rufa from Chayrif? And therefore, you should have to say, Anna, please, by Egla Arufa. So what are we all thinking? Maybe you do. Maybe you say, please, by Egla Arufa. You say, Kapara, for your nation, Israel. And by Egla Arufa, you don't say, Anna, you don't say, please. Why not? Why don't we learn from Meish Rabbeinu? Says the Gemara, Kasha, that indeed is a good question. Of course, Kasha, not too often, means there is an answer. And we'll pick up from there. Says the Gemara, what's next? After the Vidui, we learned the wording of the Vidui, the order of the sins. We learned they have to say, please. You have to say, Hashem, Ana Hashem, Chatasi Avisi Bashati. What's next? After the Vidui is finished, everyone said, Baruch Shem. Ve'inoinim Achrav, everyone responded, Baruch Shem. Tanya Rabbi Oimer. Kishem Hashem Akrav, Ugaidele Lukenu. Where do we learn this out from? The Kishem Hashem Akrav, when I call out God's name, Havu Gaidele Lukenu, you should give greatness to the name. You know what that means? Amr Lema Yishli Yisrael, Moshe Tot Kla Yisrael. Bisho Sha'ani, Maskir Shema Yishal Kaddish Baruch Hu. When I mention God's name, Atem, you Kla Yisrael, Havu Gaidele, you should give him greatness, meaning respond by Baruch Shem. Chanani Ben Achri, Rabbi Shua Oimer, a different process. When you mention a tzaddik, you do it for a blessing. You know the Navi is teaching Klai Yisrael at that point. When I mention a tzaddik, then a tzaddik oilamim, referring to God, attempt to new bracha, you should give a blessing. So two sources that when we hear the Shem Hashem, when we hear Hashem's name, we respond by giving the name uh, greatness. Of course, we nowadays don't say Baruch Shem in regular. We say Baruch Hu Baruch Shemai. We say Amen and things like that. But on on Yom Kippur, especially in the Kohen Gadol, everyone would respond, Baruch Shem in unison. Now, says the Gemara, the next Mishnah, what was after? He said, Vidoy Balo the Mizrach Hazara. The Kohen Gadol came to the east, Let's find out Mizbeach, the north part of the Mizbeach. Haskan, be amino, Yvrash, be sam, mispoilai. The Skan, Kohen Gadol, the deputy, the right hand in command was on his right. And the head of the Bezdin, Rosh Be Sav, the head of the family of the Kohanim was on his left. Not the head of the Bezdin, Rosh Be Sav. Visham, and what was there? Shnei Seirim. There were two goats. The Kilfei Ayas Hasham. They did a lottery. Uba Shnei Gorolos. There were two lotteries. Shel Ash Kuri Aya. There were two lotteries over there. There were two lotteries. Of Ashkuri. What's Ashkuri? Ashkuri is a type of wood. That is what the lottery, the pieces of uh, the lots themselves were made out of was Ashkuri wood, box wood. Vasu and Ben Gamla shows up. Ben Gamla changed it and they actually made them out of gold. And we say, Ben Gamla, what a wonderful thing that you made the lots out of gold. Now, once we mention, as always, one good thing, we continue and we say other wonderful practices, big donations in the base of Migdash. Ben Katin, I say, you'd be down the Kiar. He made 12, we've seen this before, 12 spigots and spouts for the Kiar for one reason. There are only two. He made 12 so that everyone could go and wash their hands at the same time. He also made a mechanical lift for the kir. We'll show a picture of this in a moment. So water does not become possible, you know, leaving it out overnight. Munbaz would meet handles for all the kilim. He made golden handles. The mother of Munbaz he made a golden chandelier at the door of the Hechal. 
She also made a block of gold, which was what? The parsha of Saita was written on it. Nikanara, he said, Nisim, There was a miracle that happened to his doors. We mentioned all these people for a shvach. But now, let's take a moment and let's see all these beautiful things. Okay, so first of all, here is the Kohen Gadol doing Vidui. Here we have the Kohen Gadol standing. We have the Skan on his right. We have the Rosh Beis Av on his left. We have the two animals, the two he goats in front of him. And he's about to perform the lots. Here are the lots. The lots made out of that type of wood that we saw in the Mishnah. Fox wood originally, then they made them out of gold. One that says La Hashem, one says La Zazel. Take note that there are only two lottery cards, no more. He put them in and he would choose them out. Over here you see that Ben Katin made 12 spouts for the Kihar, and this was the mechanical lift that basically they would lower the Kihar underground every night so that the water would never be considered Lina. Lina is only if the water is sitting in the vessel overnight, but if they would put the vessel underground into the river, it's no longer going to be Lina. Another one Wonderful invention that they made. Here is the chandelier as you walk into the base of Migdash. Here is the next stage, which is only when there are two spouts. We'll see about that in a moment. Says the Gemara, we're on the first wide line. For the fact that we said they walked to the north of Mizbeach, are you telling me it sounds like the Mizbeach is not in the north? Because they walked from the Mizbeach to the north. Mani, who is this? an old Machlaik, it's Rabbi Yaisi. This is the opinion of, I'm sorry, of Lesbian Yankov, he did Tanya's final of Nehashem. She's suffering Kulai. Panoi, Divir here of Lesbian Yaakov. Lesbian Yaakov learned that what do we learn out from the Pasik? That Safina Lefne Hashem, that the north part of the Azara should be completely empty, and therefore the Mizbeach is shifted a bit downward. Vaharesha of Lazarav Shimini. The previous mission we explained at length, if you remember, that the area between the Mizbeach and the Ulam, we said fits with Lazarav Shimin, answers the Gemara, no, Kulav Lesbian Yaakov, Yutani, Bab Bibin Ulam Mizbeach. And we're referring to the area between the Ulam and the Mizbeach. And that was the area that we're calling Northern, and that is how both Mishnah is fit with Rav Lazar be Rav Yaakov. Says the Gemara has scan be amino Rishbis Avis Smiley. So it sounds like how are they standing? Kain Gadol. Scan, Rish Bizav, all equal, all on the same level. Says the Gemara, Amar of Yehuda, Hamahalech Liamin Rabbi Harizabor. If you're walking with your Rabbi and you're on his right, you're a boar, you're a dreadful person. Haskan be amino Rish Bizav is Smiley. Says more one second. Our Mishnah sounds like the Tzkan was on his right. V'ayinim. Furthermore, Tani learned in a Brisa. Shleisha Nachal Mederech. Three people are walking. Harav, the Rebbe is bams on the middle. God, though, the one that the greatest Talmud is on his right. Be amino. If you cut them, it's my life. V'chein metzina b'shleisha malachim. Shari shabau eats Avram. The three malachim came to Avram. Michal bams. Michal is in the middle. Gavriel be amino. You fall with my life. So what do we see? We see that they're all in order. So why are you telling me standing on the right is a terrible thing? It sounds like by Avram. It sounds like this is the right way to walk. Answers Gemara, Tir Gemara Rav Shmuel. Our Baba, Kamei Dei Ravada, Kamei Dei Ravada, Kidei Shi Yiskase Boy. It doesn't mean you're supposed to be right on his right. It means you're a little bit behind him. So you're covering Rabbi, the Rabbi, Vatanya Ma'ali, Kenegid Rabbi Ariza Bor, Achai Rabbi Ariza Megasei Ruach, Demitzad Dei Atzduye. They go a little bit to the side. So basically, What's going on over here is the Rebbe's in the middle. You don't want to be directly to the right. You don't want to be directly behind him because you shouldn't be behind the Rebbe. That's Gase Ruach, that's Gaiva. Rather, you want to be behind, but a little bit to the side. The two wingmen on a little bit to the side, which in truth, if we go back to this picture, now we can appreciate, as you see, that the Skan and the Rish Bisav, they're not standing flush and even with the Kain Gadol. They're not standing behind him. They're standing a little bit drawn backwards, one to the right and one to the left. Says the Gemara, now we get into the lottery. That we're drawing la sa'ir, la zazel, and la shem, the kilfi aisisham, who bash negoi rallis. There were two lots, tanra banan, were smack in the middle of the white lines, and la mezayin of an aleph. Venos and aron al shneas, he rim garalis. He put on, he put lots upon the two goats. Garalis shall call dover. So we learn out. These gayer lights can be made out of anything. Yach, I would think eating shnei malzeh, shnei malzeh. It sounds like gayer lice. It sounds like in the plural. So it sounds like maybe, you know what you should do? You should put two on each. Tama Leimar says the Torah, gayer lecha la Hashem, gayer lecha la Azazel. Ein kan. The Gemara now explains. Ein kan l'shem el gayer lechad. Ein kan l'azazel el gayer lechad. el echad. Each one has only one. Yach, again, we would have thought eating al shem, al shem, 
Shein Vishal Azazel Al Zeh. Val Shein Vishal Azazel Al Zeh. Maybe it was all like a show. Maybe he had to put both on one and both on the other one, and then he would choose. Tam Alaymer Goyal Echod La Hashem. In Kan La Hashem Ela Echod. In Kan La Azazel Ela Echod. In Kain the obvious problem. I Tam Alaymer Goyal Ice. What's the plural word? Explains the Gemara. You know why? She is Shavu. They should be equal. Shal Yas Echod Shal Zav Echod Shal Kesef. One should be gold. The one should be silver. Echad goyrel, echad gadol, echad tatam. One big, one small. Goyrel shall call dov, and therefore that's what goyrel lies. They're both equal, but there's only two of them: one la'azazel, one la'ashem, and that is all. Says the Gemara, goyrel shall call dov. Or b'shita, of course, it can be made out of anything. Answers the Gemara, loitzui chalichatani. We learned in a raisa. The fish, I must see no bit tzitz shashem kasev alav. Who shall zav the tzitz? The breast, the head plate was made out of gold, and it said the shem's name, Hashem's name, and is made out of gold. So yach, I would have thought. Av Zekain sold to buy this lottery. Tamalaymar. Gairol, Gairol, Reba, Reba shall Zayis, Reba shall Egois, Reba shall Ashkairai, any type of wood, whether it's olive wood, whether it's nut wood, whether it's box wood, any type of wood, you'll have to make the lots. And then, of course, we learned, which is what we're about to get involved in, that uh, later on, there was a special type of lottery that was made, which the Mishnah taught us that Ben Gamla was his name that made the lots out of gold. Says the Gemara. Now we're going to get into all the different donations, different wonderful things that people made for the base of Amikdash. So the first one, Ben Gatin has the of Dulli Kiar. He made 12 spouts for the Kiar. Tanav learned in the Mishnah. We've seen this already. So all 12 of them could wash their hands and their legs. If you remember, that was the Raya, that the one that did the Shechita did not do the Kabbalah, because then if you did that, there would have to be an extra Kain getting involved, and therefore says that there are twelve Kohanim that would be involved around this kira at once. Tana Shachas b'Meluyoi Mikadish Yadav Ragla Mina Elyon. In the morning you went from the top spout. Arvis be reduced in the evening from the lower spout. Mikadish Yadav Ragla Mina Tachtoin from the bottom one. That was this picture that we saw. This was the original kiar that only had two spouts. You see over here that as the water went down, they would use the lower water. In the kiar. Now we continue with the with the donations. Vafu Aisa, what was next? Mukhni Lakir, this mechanical lift. My Mukhli Am Rabbi Gilgala. It was a uh Galgala Davi Mashke, Mashka Alay was some sort of a lift or a rolling item that allowed them to lower it into the ground in order that it wasn't Pisul Alina. Didn't like get left overnight. Munbaz Amel Khaisa called Yadis Akil me made handles. Says the Gabar of Navdino Ledido Tizov. He should have why didn't he make the items themselves out of gold. Why is he going and making handles to all the items out of gold? Why didn't he make the kalim themselves out of gold? Amar Abayi, you know why? We're talking about the knives. And you can't make a knife out of gold because it's too malleable, too bendable. But the handle you can make out of gold. Mace face says, Amar, why not? The top line. On the Zayman of A's. Avu Isaac Kani Kalim. Says the Brisa, Kabunba is also made Kane Kalim, Vaigne Kalim, the bases and the and the part that you hold them, the Yodai Sakalim and the handles Kalim, the Yodai Sakinim shall Yamiki Burn shall Zaf. And he made the handles of the knives. What do we see clearly? We see clearly he's not only referring to the knives for the fact that we have this whole Brisa listed, and then it says knives. Says the Gemara, Tirgma Abaya, Bikatisa, the Nirga Vichatsini. It's referring to the handles of the axes and adds other, other types of cutting utensils. Pencils, not just knives, but again, the common denominator is these are all items that you cannot make the blade out of gold because it's too bendable, and that's why he specifically made the handles. And we continue, Helane Imai, the mother of Munbaz Isin of Reshazov, she made a golden chandelier when you walked into the Heichal, says the Gemara Tana. We learned in the Mishnah, when the sun would rise, the sun would go up in the morning, and it would sparkle. The sun would shine onto this golden chandelier, and it would sparkle. And everyone would know, everyone would know, the time of Krishna has come. It says the Gemara, we have a Brisa. And the Brisa says that if you say Shema, with the people in the Mishmar, the people who are working in their base of Mikdash that week, and you know why? Because one reads it too early and one reads it too late. Says the Gemara, 
one second. What happened to the chandelier? We just said that Munvaz's mother made this golden chandelier. The sun would rise. Everyone knows, oh, time for Krishma. Sounds like they all said it at the appropriate time. We have a Mishnah that says that some Quranim said it too early and some Quranim said it too late. Answers the Gemara, Marbaya Lishar, Amei Di Israel. No, it means for everyone else in Kla Israel. Everyone else will now know the time. I should say better. The Gemara's question really was, what was the purpose? If the Anshi Mishmar early, Anshi Maimon are late, so everyone knows what to do. So when is who are the people saying it at this particular time? And we're answering for the Sharam and the everyone else when they see the chandelier shining. And then we said they made a golden tablet, which the Parsha of Saita was written on it. And it seems like the reason was so that when they would have to write the Parsha, they would have a, a they would have a something to copy it from. They would have this golden tablet that had the whole Parsha written on it. It's like a Form and then they would copy it over to every any time they had to unfortunately write a site on the cloth. Says the Gemara, but you know, you see from over here, Shmas Mina, this is a beautiful raya. The latter writes something to train something how to learn, I mean, not necessarily only for a child, but we see the latter make a form so that later you could copy from that form. Says the Gemara. Is that, and which of course is a big machleg is whether you're allowed to write suvim, whether you're allowed to put sukim into text for almost no reason just to teach other people how to write. Amar Eishlaki Mishem Rav Yanai Ba'alef Beis. No, they didn't actually write out the whole parasha. They wrote it out in Aleph Beis, the first word of every po- word, the uh, first letter and the last letter of every word. Meisvi says, Amar, one second. Kshu kaisev raya the kaisev. It says when they would write over the parasha saita, they would look and they would write. What does it sound like? It sounds like they would look and they would copy it over. But if you're telling me that on this golden tablet, it just had the first and last letter, what does it mean they would copy it over? Answers the Gemara. Ema, you know what it means. They would look at it and they would write like as if they don't write over each word, but that will remind them of how they're supposed to write it. One last question. It doesn't say like that which is written. It says they would copy over exactly. And this price it says even more explicit. So we see clearly they were copying it over word for word. Answers the Gemara. Awesome. As we move over to tomorrow's daf of Lamel Ches, says the Gemara. Over there it was it was written in alternating words that they would first write um they would uh, actually no let's just see Rashi Rashi explains and we'll finish with that Rashi says b'say rugen em loy shachav achra of Rashi tevis ad seiv a mikra the em loy ves loy satis of achra of Rashi tevis ad seiv a mikra yitin Hashem loy shachav achra of Rashi tevis ad seiv a mikra uba amayim achra of Rashi tevis so basically what Rashi is explaining is that the beginning of each pasuk was fully written and after the beginning of each pasuk then it was in aleph base form so now it's how we could both like, coexist on one end it was in aleph base form. On the other hand, the Bible says they copied over word for word and then it lists the Psukim. Correct. Because certain Psukim were written in full, then it was written in Aleph based form. That was the, the next donation, this golden tablet of the Parsha Saita. We'll pick it up from here tomorrow.